Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, I'm nice and loud this morning. Welcome everyone to Children's Sabbath, a special day in the year when we kind of culminate our uh, prayers that we've been having for children. We are so glad that you're here in body and those of who are here in spirit elsewhere, we're glad you're here. Um, we're going to begin the service with our call to worship that we have been doing throughout this season. If I can ask you to stand for that and read the people's part. And Tess and Josh will lead us. Today we focus our prayers on all children who face problems and have hope that Jesus can bring peace in the midst of crisis. Each day in the United States alone, 1,844 children are confirmed as abused or neglected. 860 babies are born at low birth weight. 126 children are arrested for violent crimes. 1.5 million children enrolled in public school experience homelessness. Eight children or teens commit suicide. A child or teen is killed with a gun every two hours and 36 minutes. Open, Open our, our eyes, O oh God, God, to, to find, find ways to, to provide, provide hope. Too many suffer in our midst. God of justice, God of mercy, make us merciful and just. Today, we relight a candle for children affected by poverty. Today, we relight a candle for children affected by hunger. Today, we relight a candle for children affected by poor education and care opportunities. Today, we relight a candle for children affected by violence. Today, as we pause for Children's Sabbath, we light the Christ candle that we might be reminded that we are the light of Christ for children everywhere. with me. God of this children's Sabbath, we give thanks for the children you have placed in our midst. May we always regard them as your highest blessing and be committed to their blessing in ways large and small. Help us now as we continue to give you honor and glory in our worship together. Amen. You may be seated. For our minute permissions today, just a reminder that this is the last Sunday that you can give for the food drive. If you're not here or you're not ready to give today, you've got the rest of this coming week 
So you can give until Friday, either by mailing the check in, dropping it off in the office, or doing it through Givelify. As of last Tuesday, we had collected $2,430, and we'll disperse those funds next week then to the different um, food banks throughout Morgan County. I also am here to announce that next Sunday, we are restarting Soup Sunday. So you will be able to purchase a quart of soup after the service. They'll be on a first come, first serve basis, so when we're out, we're out. The two varieties next week are going to be a, a sausage and rice soup, and then we're also going to do what I call a kitchen vegetable, because whatever is in our kitchen is going in that soup. <laughs> so we'll have those two things available for you next week. It's $5 a quart jar. If you keep your quart jar or bring it back before next month, then we'll, we'll reduce your, your fee for soup next month to just $4 for returning that jar. So hopefully we'll see you after church next Sunday for soup. Thank you. At this time, I think I'm inviting the children up for the children's message. You guys come on up. And I need all the younger children to come sit on the floor here. Today, our youth have the children's message. Do you all ever have times when you feel like nothing's going your way? There's bad things happening. Well, they're going to sing about a jungle, okay? And after they get through singing, I'm going to hand you a tray with uh, some things about how you can find peace in the kingdom. Okay, gang? Okay, you come over here, okay, guys? You can go sit down. Here, Asher. Here you go. Violet, come get this.
Grace and Lauren. Okay. Thank you. This is your response time. No children worship and wonder today. You're going to be in here. Okay. Did anybody have a bulletin? I think it's prayer time. Is it prayer time? <laughs> I had too many irons in the fire this morning. Oh, there is, a, there is a nice little thing up here that tells me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> prayer cards. Did anybody have any prayer cards turned in? Do we collect any today? There is one in the back. Oh, great. I love things to be praising God about. Emily Hankins begins a new job tomorrow. Congratulations, Emily. Yay, yay, yay. Let's bow in prayer. Loving God, thank you for the stories we have of Jesus that help us to understand what it means to be loved and to love. God, we thank you that throughout history, you have protected the innocents. Thank you for bringing fortitude and courage to the women who protected Moses so that we might remember that we are all called to be present for our children. Thank you for causing Elizabeth's baby to leap in her womb so that we can remember that there is joy and promise in the blessing of all God's children. And thank you for sending magi, wise men, to bless Jesus so that we may recall that it's our work to provide resources for all your children. We praise you because we know that because you were present in all of those stages of Jesus' early life, that he grew to be healthy and happy and whole and was able to usher in a new covenant. Gracious God, we confess that often we fail to hear the voices of those who are young, impoverished and hurting. We ignore the voices of those who speak in their languages, other languages, come from other communities, have different life experiences than our own. We turn away from voices that call us to account or to commit or to sit with their pain. Thank you for your unfailing love and forgiveness. Oh God, when Jesus put a child amid the disciples squabbling about position, he reminded us of what is important. Forgive us again for missing the mark. Remind us to hush and heed the voices of children and young people. Open us to what they have to teach us, for ways they might lead us to more faithfully be your people who love and listen heal and prevent harm, and pursue your ways of peace and justice. Loving God, we lift up those who are hurting, and we pray that your grace might cover them. We thank you that there is rejoicing going on, a new job to be found. Help us, O oh God, to be aware of those who are suffering because of their lack of faith, hope, and love. May we be instruments of your peace, enabling others to have hope. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask our youth 
to come up and lead our special music, A Little Child Shall Lead. One step closer, everybody. One step closer. Thank you. Thank you guys. For our scripture today, we're going to look first at the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, one through six. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with his, the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. A wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead. And then from Philippians 2, 1 through 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's a jungle out there. Better be aware. Better prepare. 
I know that you're aware. Do we have the first slide? I hope. All those things that are going on. We've heard the facts every Sunday about what children are dealing with in the United States. The injustices of poverty, hunger, lack of educational opportunity, and gun violence. I know, and I know you know, of families here in Martinsville that are facing substance abuse, inadequate housing, health needs, parental incarceration, racial discrimination, and suicide. Wow. Talk about a bungled affair. Talk about what could be seen as a hopeless situation. A few weeks ago, my granddaughter said, Grandma, why do you listen to so much news? It's so negative. Well, it took me back for a moment, and I think I said, kind of said something about, well, I wanted to be uh, informed, to become aware and prepared, and perhaps there is something I can do. Will you bow with me in prayer? Holy Spirit, work through us this morning as we open our hearts and minds to become children of hope, children with vision, children connected and nourished by the love of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. The first passage we heard this morning, we often hear at Advent time because we focus on the coming of the Christ child. As we celebrate Children's Sabbath today, I want us to look at what this text might mean for persons who are going through trauma and recognize the hope that all of us can have in Christ. Throughout the ancient Near East, it was understood that gods communicated with their people through the human voice. And for Israel, that was no different. The Hebrew word for prophet is navi translated to bubble up. Prophets were conduits of God's word to bubble up and disrupt the status quo. The name Isaiah translates as the Lord Yahweh saves. Isaiah lived in a tenuous time. Israel was facing war from Assyria from both the north and the south. Isaiah's vision offers his people hope in order to get through those tenuous times. The Israelites are tired. They've been beaten down. But the prophet assures them that they will grow and stand tall again. Isaiah proclaims that the Assyrian Empire will be supplanted by a new tree, a tree not only that grows, but bears fruit. Today, our children represent a hope beyond death, destruction, and chaos that they have inherited. We as adults are called to be proactive, ensuring that the new generation do not pay for the sins of the previous generations. We can participate in a new covenant. How so? Commentators on this Isaiah passage remind us of the promise and the power of the Messiah, reminding us of our roots in Christ. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Our faith in Christ enables us to bear much fruit. I wonder how this could be possible or what kind of fruit we will bear. Isaiah says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, understanding, the Spirit or counsel and strength, the Spirit of of knowledge 
and the fear of the Lord. The Gospels tell us that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, and he promised each of us the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts and in later letters, we read that his promise came true and that Christians were called to live and walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit influences our thoughts, decisions, and our relationships with others. Our youth are currently working on a musical they will share with you later in February called Peace in the Kingdom. You heard two songs today. They've only had a few weeks' practice. But just wait until February. These two songs are based on the Isaiah passage. I pray that the message of hope in the midst of serious issues we face today will not only bring us peace, but challenge us to work together to bring the peace and the kingdom that the musical calls about. I had an interesting conversation uh, right before fall break with a 12-year-old at the Haven. It was really interesting. We were playing pool, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know, the Holy Spirit works in youth, too. It works in everybody. And I want to start a Bible study because the Holy Spirit is telling me to start a Bible study. Well, we're listening and talking, and I'm assuring him that, yes, I believe that the Holy Spirit works even through children and youth. Well, we played pool for this, during this 10-minute conversation, and none of us got a ball in the pocket. <laughs> and we finally say, okay, we better stop talking now and get to business. Anyway, talking with him reminded me that 25 years ago, a group of seven middle schoolers got together around the table in the library, and they had a vision about the Haven and what the Haven Youth Center could be. And they got to work, and their parents and many of you here supported their vision. I was also reminded that just about this time of year, those same youth had heard about Operation Christmas Child Box, and they decided they wanted to reach out to other children, and they prepared 12 boxes. That ministry here at First Christian Church started with them, and the last time we participated before the pandemic, 50 boxes were prepared. Does the Holy Spirit bear fruit? Mm hmm. Right before fall break, I watched a movie about six year old Ruby Bridges. Now, some of you have heard me talk about her before because I've used her in sermon illustrations before. She was born in 1954. And she was one of four black students who were sent to immigrate all white schools in New Orleans. Her faith influenced her family, her schoolmates, and Dr. Robert Cole, a child psychologist. After watching the movie, I wanted to find out a little bit more about Dr. Cole because I knew some facts about him, but I wanted to see what he had to say about Ruby. And so I watched this five-minute interview that he did, um, can be found on YouTube, in 2013 about his time with Ruby. He explained that he was driving by the school on Ruby's first day, and there were 200 people, white people, standing outside the school shouting terrible insults, death wishes. And he thought, 
I'm a child psychologist, maybe I could get this girl through the trauma. Well, after months of listening to her and observing her, Cole was amazed that she didn't seem traumatized by what was happening to her every day for months. One day, the officers had told her, Ruby, don't turn around, don't turn around, just keep going. She was ushered in every day by four FBI people. And one day she turned around and her teacher noticed that her lips were moving. And she told Dr. Cole. And so Dr. Cole asked her, uh, Ruby, what were you saying to those people? Well, I wasn't talking to those people. I was talking to God. Well, why would you pray for those people? Dr. Cole asked. Do you, and she said, well, do you think they need praying for? Well, that kind of stopped him cold for a minute. Then she asked where she got that idea. And she said, because my mommy and my daddy told me that and my minister at church. I pray for them every morning and every afternoon. Well, you must have some other feelings about them. She says, I just keep praying for them and hope God will be good to them. Well, what was she praying? She said, the people need help, and I always pray the same thing. Please, dear God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Dr. Cole says, I heard that someplace before, and it silenced me. I had no other questions to ask. And then he goes on in the YouTube to say that here is a child in the 60s. We learned to say was culturally impoverished. Her parents were illiterate. And yet they taught her biblical truths in a way that they were able to live out. They hadn't read any parenting books, gone to any parenting workshops. But they had heard the messages of Jeremiah and Isaiah and Jesus. They had memorized them from Old and New Testaments. And they tried to live them out in their daily lives. Ruby made it through that first year and told Cole that a boy in her class that at first was kind of a bully to her became a friend. And... Cole asked her, well, what changed? I think people are happier when they have friends. Cole realized that this little girl's faith in Jesus had kept her from being traumatized by the events she faced. A little child shall lead. Ruby's faith so influenced Dr. Cole that he became a Christian and later wrote a children's book about her. The song from Peace in the Kingdom, the last verse goes, a little child of faith, that's what we need, a little child of faith to plant the seeds of peace. The world's in need of vision now, and faith is what we need, a little child of faith shall lead. Last month, the church board chose vision as our congregation's wor one word for 2022-2023. As we vision together, let us listen to the Holy Spirit working in each and every one of us as children of God. Our children Remind the storyteller every Sunday. Oh, don't forget to light the candle for all the children of the world. And that includes all of us. There is a lot of trauma going on in our community. Let's take the words of Paul to heart and try memorizing them 
so that we can live them daily. I'm going to put up part of the Philippians 2 passage. This is from Good News, the Good News Bible, where Paul says, Your life in Christ makes you strong, and his love comforts you. You have fellowship with the Spirit, and you have kindness and compassion for one another. I urge you then to make me completely happy by having the same thoughts, sharing the same love, and being one in soul and mind. When I started college, my goal was to be an elementary school teacher and be an example of the priesthood of all believers. I realized that God was calling me to do ministry with children and youth in the church after I began an after-school program for elementary kids once a week at my local church. I transferred to Northwest Christian College and worked for two years with First Christian Church Eugene, Oregon's middle school youth group. Over the years, I've tried to listen, encourage, and enable children and youth to grow in their relationship with Christ, to love one another, to serve compassionately. In case you didn't know, I love kids. I have personally experienced God working in and through them many, many times. It gives me hope. Hope for the future despite all the chaos that we face. I have witnessed Paul's words in the Philippians, borne out in children and adults who are strong in their faith, comforted by Christ's love, and have compassion for one another. I have also witnessed how hard it is, very hard, to have the same thoughts and being of one soul and mind. Pastor Roxy, over the past few weeks, has been talking about how we're all masterpieces. I'm, today I'm saying we're all children of God. And we find our unity in Christ. We are a people of faith who find hope in the promises of Christ and cherish his love. Today, we are reminded that our text, by our text, that like Jesus, the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom, understanding, and compassion so that we too can reach out to one another and our community in a chaotic world. As we become a people of vision this year, let us remember our children and the children of our community. Let us be aware. Let's prepare. Let's show that we care. And remember that a little child of faith can lead. They, too, are led by the Holy Spirit and have vision. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for this community of faith who through the years have built one another up, who despite any differences have shown their love and compassion, reaching out to others, not only in this building, but to others. Thank you, O God. In Christ's name, amen. We come now to the table. We call it a welcome table because all are welcome, young and old, no matter what your color of skin, what you look like, skinny, fat, you're welcome here because Jesus loves us. Will you join me now in singing Jesus Loves Me?
Do you remember Jesus saying, I am the bread of life? I am the bread of life. When we come around this table, we celebrate something very special. We remember that Jesus was crucified, that we might have life, that we might experience forgiveness. Bread. Most of us eat it. I think most of us here in this room and perhaps out there remember that we find our nutrients in Jesus, the bread of life. As we come to this table and participate in this meal, I was taught growing up that this is a time that I can pray individually, asking for forgiveness, asking for help. And so as we participate this morning after I do the words of institution and the music is being played, I'd ask that you eat of the bread because we are individuals in Christ and save the cup that we might all drink together as the body of Christ. We remember on that night so long ago, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take, eat, all of you, for this bread represents my body given for you. And in like manner, he took the cup and having blessed it, he said, take, drink, all of you, for this is the new covenant given for you for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we know that you judge us and are, we are so thankful that you do that fairly. Thank you, Lord, for giving your son so freely to us that one day we will be together with you. We are so unworthy, but you find us worthy through Jesus Christ. Help us to see you as if we have eyes of a child. As we partake of these elements, we praise you for all that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us drink as the body of Christ. Praise God for the cup of salvation. We come now to a time when we recognize our tithes and offerings. And, you know, this is one way that we bear our fruit, right? Uh, Janet let us know this morning that we're sending food out, right, to our community. We're helping to feed the community. Through our Week of Compassion offerings, we're helping those who have been hit by tornadoes and hurricanes and other natural disasters all over the world. This is a time when we can give financially, but we can also think about what talents and gifts we have. Uh, just this month, we had people doing saws ministry, building a ramp from our congregation, bearing fruit, showing compassion, showing love. I would ask now that we stand as we give glory to God for these gifts. 
that we are about to receive. <coughs> Praise God from whom Thank you, God, for the children you have given us. With our tithes and offerings, we ask you to use them to further your kingdom on earth. Thank you for generously blessing us so that we can be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So faith in action tonight. How many of you are planning on coming to pumpkin carving? I want to know. If your hand's not up, I hope it will be soon. This is a fun time. And uh, it's intergenerational. There's something for every age, okay? In your bulletin, you have the announcement about the blood drive. I think it's here. Uh, coming up in November. And you can sign up for that, okay? It's from 9 to 2, I think. I'm trying to think what else. Does anybody remember anything else I should announce this morning? Oh, the town... Of course, and that's the most important thing. Tomorrow night, there's a town hall meeting here at 6.30 in our dining hall about mental health issues in Morgan County. Come find out. Come be prepared to care, okay? My challenge for you this week is to go out from this place and listen to all God's children and to think, what is my vision for our congregation this year? Okay? We got a head start here. So be doing that. And I want to announce this next hymn, new words by one of my favorite hymnists, which speaks about open our gates, open our doors, so that we might think in terms of vision beyond buildings, but outward. It's to a familiar tune, though I may speak, okay? I hope you pay attention and sing along.
And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.